It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got to have a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because <laughs> that's New Orleans and this is happy hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Maple Leaf Bar on Oak Street. Woo. Correct, Andrew? That's correct. That's where I came. Okay. I don't hear you at all. The Maple Leaf is the longest-running <laughs> music club in New Orleans. It's been hosting music here for 45 years. Lenny Green is here. Lenny, you play yeah. on the stage. Yes, sir. Once in a while, I've seen saw photos of you online playing. Yes, sir. I've never seen you playing here live, though, for some reason. Why is that? I'll be I'm here February 5th. February the 5th. And I'll be here February 13th. The, okay. Which is the night before Valentine's Day. That's a handy day. Why Why those two odd days, 5 and 13? Is well, it, Are you like a new well, moralist? I have, <laughs> almost. <laughs> well, I have two bands. Uh, I have a reggae ah. band with Renard Poche, Nola right. Reggae, right. every first Wednesday at the Maple Leaf for 2020. And I have my band, which is R&B Funk, a little dance. We're doing something for Valentine's Day, pre-Valentine's Day. Right. Oh, so, that's nice. So, so it's like get in the mood. So yeah. So bring you, bring you, bring your lady. So you're here. Set the vibe. The first. What did you say? The first what of every month? <laughs> first Wednesday. First Wednesday. First Wednesday every is, month in is reggae night. Oh, okay. And George Porter is here every Monday night. The Rebirth Brass Band is here every Tuesday, and John Cleary is playing here at the Maple Leaf every Friday night through Jazz Fest. So how about that? It's Love pretty, it. It's a pretty good lineup. One favorite artist. Bombing. F- favorite artist. <laughs> Total favorite. I mean, George Porter. George John Porter Cleary. is a genius. And John I mean, Perry. It's amazing. And you get to see them in this little intimate setting here, which is one of the great I'm things about living in New Orleans. I'm spoiled right. Andrew, are you back on now? Check, check. Nope. No. Oh. Well, you can, I, can you hear yourself? Check, no. I can't hear you. Colin says he can hear you fine. Check, Come check. Come back to us. That doesn't Andrew. make any check, sense check. whatsoever. And the fabulous Flip Orley is here all the way from Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I had nothing going on today, so I drove in for the podcast. That's nice. Thanks for doing that. You have nothing going on usually on a, what's it, a Wednesday afternoon? Yeah, it's a Wednesday. I've got uh, my kids at his mom's house, and um, I think I told you I'm, I'm between uh, I'm between uh, relationships, and uh, I don't have a pet. You did mention that you were between relationships just before we went on here. You actually didn't use those terms. You said, I'm between batshit crazy women, I think. I may have said that. If uh, if there's bipolar involved, then I'm I'm a major attraction. But you're attracted to bipolar women, or bipolar women are attracted to you? At least one of them, but I think they're attracted to me. I think right. I have the same syndrome. Are you divorced five times? Uh, once. Are you? Yeah. Once. Underachiever. <laughs> You've been divorced what? five times. Mm-hmm. That doesn't include the uh, that doesn't include the fiance uh, and I that broke up before the marriage. So that's like it, five and a half. It doesn't include the one that broke up before the marriage. So because. But you've been, it's di- so weird. you've been divorced five times. Is that what you're saying? Been divorced five times. Yeah, she wanted to keep the engagement ring, and I said no. And she said, why? All the other women got to keep their engagement ring. And I go, yeah, well, they fucking married me. I'm like, you're, you're bailing early. So, <laughs> well, Is there a sort of a universal reason why these women get divorced from you, or is it you? I have about a one-year shelf life. What do you think it is that you're doing wrong that you haven't figured out after five? Uh, my picking skills are pretty bad. Your what skills? Picking. Pecking. Picking. Picking with an I. Pecking? Picking. Picking. P-I-C-K. Selecting. I don't pick you well. You mean you're a bad chooser. Chooser, yeah. Right. Well, what are the common, what's the common mistake you're making? The what? common denominator is fucking me. <laughs> well, that's what I'm getting at. After five times, isn't there some sort of common thing that you've picked up that you're doing wrong that you could have corrected after you know four? What's so, what's so weird? Well, I mean, yeah. I, but what's so weird is like I've answered your question. I don't, I don't think you believe me. But here at least is part of the deal. <laughs> I'm not disbelieving you. No, I just... I um, can get more specific. So, like, so I don't meet women in church. I don't meet women um, at uh, like the PTA. I don't meet women at the office because I'm a stand-up comic and I travel around the country. And I guess, I guess sort of the common denominator is meeting women at shows... Uh, is okay. probably not the best locale. That might be the problem. I that's think that's a, a, that's a big problem. Yeah. Well, what do you think the reason? You mean because they're, are they in the audience? Is that one working? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How can we, Andrew? This is the weirdest day of all. Yeah, time. I can't hear it. So, I can't but, hear Colin, but Colin says you're in the shot. Great. But I love the two mic shot it right there. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, though, Colin. What is going on? Yeah. None of these mics. Andrew, maybe there's some 
like vortex. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> poltergeist or something. Yeah, something, some weird. And you should happen. have a good mic because it was your idea to use the uh, the, the mic stands. Yeah, I think I doomed it. Yeah. It sounds good here. <laughs> okay, well, apparently we'll be able to hear it fine on the day. Yeah. Just uh, tr- <laughs> trust that I'm saying, expressing positive things to you. Okay. Oh, here, here's the answer. Take off one of these headphones. Uh-huh. <laughs> And the audience okay. is all that matters. Yeah. That's exactly right. Okay, so anyway, we're back to me. Where did you meet your girlfriend? At a show? I uh, met her at <laughs> Dos Efes, actually. It was yeah. after a show, but yeah, I played a show there. So you played a show there, and you mm-hmm. met her, and you've been together for a few years now, and it's all good still. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. And Don't introduce from me. I'm Len- <laughs> bad news. Lenny, where did you meet your ex-wife? Uh, I met my ex-wife. Actually, on stage. Okay. There you go. There, you go. Yes, so, there right. it is. There. So we've thing. completely doomed this argument. Of this. It's not well, no, because where the thing you're is, them at all. you know, if your if your job is uh, like if it's a hobby, that's one thing. But if your job is to entertain full time, and I've been doing this for my entire adult life, I don't have a lot of places I can go to meet people. Yes, but the average person is going to a show. It's not like there's some sort of weird subgroup of people who go out to hear comedy. Um, that's it's, turning out to not be true. I think those those are the same people that like live music also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they yeah. like live shows and live bands and they follow bands. And you you may catch the eye of someone. They may want to meet you after the show or on break. And then it turns into a dating situation. And then it turns into, you know, a fiancé situation. And then it turns into a marriage. And then okay. they realize... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what? that's the evolution. That they is. realize that you're a musician or an entertainer, and I kind of don't, I kind of don't want to go through that. You coming home late from the club, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, women are like, I mean, my, I can remember my ex-wife saying, "You're gonna just have to make a decision. It's either gonna be me or music." And I was like, "What the? F-? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long did it take to get to that sentence?" Exactly. I was like, well, how long did it take? That was, was a real that, question. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Was that a week later, or a year later, or ten years later? Or? It was like it was like a year later. I, just one right. Year. The like shelf life is about a year. But we were together like two years, and then got married, and then it kind of ruined it. You know, yeah. it was kind of like a, you know, an ownership thing. I, I felt, you know, like I own you now. You you need to be home by midnight. You know, boom boom. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> is that what happens Wait. to you, Flip? No, because, I mean, I'm on the road for a week or two at a time. So, I, you know, if I live in Lafayette and I'm working in D.C., I can't come home every night at midnight. Good point. So, that yeah, that's kind of a fuck you moment. So, uh, <laughs> be, be, before cell phones, so before cell phones, my, uh, one of my wives insisted I get a beeper, which I didn't want to get because it's one-way communication, right? So, then uh, I had a week of shows uh, in New York. I was like, like Caroline's and I was doing the Today Show and blah, 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 whatever the case may be. And so, uh, I was stuck in a cab. And she started hitting my uh, beeper like every 10 minutes. But I was stuck in traffic in New York on a cab. And so, uh, so like it was an hour before I could get to a phone to call her back. And she, uh, she told me to go fuck myself so many different ways. I mean, it was really impressive. Hmm. And, uh, and so I threw my beeper away that day. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and see, this kind of, well, not, not what you went through, but, you know, she said, it's either going to be me or music. And I was did like. Did she have a voice like that? Or <laughs> I bet she did. I had no doubt. And I was like. That's well, quite a nice voice, actually. <laughs> it was a is nice voice. Is she still single? She's, no, well, no. She's probably married with kids by now. I mean, oh, you I don't know, have any idea what happened I don't know. Yeah. But, 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 you know, I said, well, please don't compete with an inanimate object. You know, <laughs> something that is a part of my life. I'm, I've been doing music, you know, before I met you. And you know what she did? She jumped up out of bed and she punched me in my face. Oh, wow! I was like, Jesus, you don't. Know, if you don't get your way, I mean, <laughs> if, I was like, whoa, that's an interesting. Image. And that was the very first time domestic abuse was introduced to my life. Wow. My relationship. You make it sound like it wasn't the last time. <laughs> well, well, that was the very first time. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're lying in bed together? No, I, I came home. She was already oh, you in were, bed. She was in bed, and she you was, were out of bed. She was in the bed like this. Mad. And I walked into the bedroom, and I'm like, what's up, you know? Because I'm, you know, I'm, still, I'm still pumped from the show, you know? Right. Great show. It was a great show, sold-out show. Great performance, you know? So you feel even better when there was a good performance, you know? Great. It could be a sold-out show. You could have a horrible performance, and it was like, 
you still got paid, but you you know right. you stunk up the place. You feel like you did a good job, right? Did you're feeling good, good about yourself. Feeling good. Come home. You expect well, your wife to be happy to see you. Ex- oh, exactly. Going to be interested to hear the story about what a great night you had. Exactly. Instead, she's pissed off because you're out having fun and she's lying in bed angry. Why doesn't she go to the show? Well, I think she had to work or something that night. I can't remember, but you know, you know, it, it was it was a thing where it became. I thought what I noticed was a jealousy. You know, like all these people know you and like you and stuff, and I'm just your wife. You know, I'm just, you know, I have a regular job, and 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 if I'm like, you know, it's really just a job also to perform. You know, yeah, but um, it's a bit more glamorous. It's a little bit more ground glamorous, and somewhere. it's also a passion for most people, right? Like that 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 emotional tie-in. I'm passionate about what I do. I'm sure you are as well, and so I think they do. Not all, but at least my. Wives, uh, I think they feel like they were competing with uh, with something that I was passionate about. I think it's attention. It's an attention thing, you know, like a competition with attention. That's what I experienced, at least. Listen, look, we're going to do two things here. One, we're going to make you play a song, Lenny, so we know what we're talking about. And yeah. then we're going to come back and talk about hypnosis. Okay. After but I, I will tell you this. Based on what you just said, it, it taught me a very valuable lesson. And that is if you're an entertainer, never get your uh, significant other an oversized ring. <laughs> Is that like a bumper sticker for it? No, I be, because if, you're, if your spouse gets out of bed and pops you in the face. <laughs> uh, okay. You have that, that shiner okay. yeah. <laughs> for the next gig. So she actually hit you in the, Lenny, she actually hit you in the face, punched you in the face. Well, yeah, she, I mean, I, I kind of, you know, parried a little bit, but mm. I mean, she got me. Bam. Was your first reaction to hit her back? I think that <laughs> No, I've never, I've never. Ever. I know, but when someone hits you, kind of like the first instinct is to. I, my first instinct, I, if I remember correctly, was total shock. Right. Like it had never happened before. It's like it's a Pretty side that I never saw before. And I'll it, bet that was a shock. It didn't help your relationship, I assume. Oh, it was over. It was, that was. It was the beginning of the end. That was the moment. That, that was the beginning of the end. Started to. You can always tell when someone's in a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Because, because of the passion uh, behind that punch. No, because they don't join in. <laughs> well, it's also because Andrew's mic's not working, so it's a little difficult, even though it technically is working. Yeah. Um, but Andrew's on the road constantly, and his girlfriend lives miles, hundreds of miles away, a thousand yeah, miles. So we can't even fight. We don't have a chance to. Right. You know? But you've yeah. kept it going for a long time now. We don't have time to break up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Th- thousands of miles away. Where? Uh, uh, she's in, Sp- well, near Spokane, Washington. Um, oh, that's a good long ways away. Good long ways. Uh, and honestly, you know, this is this is a temporary thing, and uh, you know, we're seeing this this phase through. But but there is that element of both of us being busy and and having our work to focus on. And uh, when you say it's temporary, you mean the distance? Oh, right, the distance or the relationship. Is, <laughs> the, the distance is temporary. Okay. Yeah. So you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel uh, as far as that's concerned. And uh, you know, meantime, sure, it offers its own. Uh, uh, list of, of challenges, but uh, so far, so good, I suppose. The funny thing about it musically is that all your songs, or most of your songs, I should say, are about loneliness and heartbreak and despair. And Well, there's a latent effect. You have to write the song <laughs> right. after experiencing it. But, you probably but, but edit your it, relationship and, then, is really and then you record We're, it. Whereas Lanny's songs are all <laughs> oh, yeah. love songs Other about side. how wonderful life is. Yeah. Well, and he's well, like, you know, getting be, punched in the face. Right, yeah. You know, you have, that's you have great. That contrast. <laughs> that's pretty that's interesting. Good. That, yeah. that, that's oh, paradoxical. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Have you written a song about getting popped in the face? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, um, that's great. We could do, Andrew, that we could do that today. Yeah, the, I, I, well, I mean, I would think that you'd want some time. Again, there's a latent thing. You know. All right. Hey, listen, anyway, Lenny, you going to play something? Sure. Where's that guitar gone? We're, we're, we're pretty sort of disorganized. Hey, yeah. Nick. That's how we're going to get the guitar. <laughs> Nick's got it. Was Nick said he was going to play as well? Yes. Is that true? Is that really happening? I have, a, I have an original song, which is about love, actually. Valentine's yeah, okay. Day is on the way. Right. Uh, and <laughs> we'll do, we'll do a, uh, an original. Where would you like him to? We have to just put Nick over here. Okay. We don't have any other place for him, but I don't even see him. Is he actually in the building somewhere? I saw him earlier. I saw him earlier. He's, he should be probably in the back. Okay, well, should we just move along until Nick shows up? We can there have that air right for there. there he is right there. Okay. He's out the back smoking weed. That was impressive. <laughs> just get. Sure, man. Come on okay, in. Okay, Nick. We're going to put Come you there. Come on in, Nick. Because, <laughs> <clears throat> Nick, you're the bartender here sometimes. Yes. At the um, Maple Leaf. Four days a week. 
Four days a week. Not yes. today, though. Not today. So you're doing double duty as a guitar player. Yeah. I mean, when Lenny asked me, I was I subbed out my shift because it sounded like a really wow. fun thing to do. Okay. And I saw you Check guys here out. last week and was yeah. intrigued. Check awesome. That okay, out. cool. Hey, is this mic working at all? Yes. Okay, so. All right. What are you going to play, you guys? So here's a, here's a song. It's from my original album. Produced by myself and Mike Bass from uh, Trombone Shorty's band, okay. my close friend. It's called uh, All or Nothing Online. It's available online. Right. This song is called All Day and Night. Okay. The great Lanny Maybe Green. Not. And we can steal that online, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Under your spell, don't know what to do. Yeah. Can you see that issue in my life that make me complete? Girl, it's you. When I think of this life and the love and the joy you bring. So magical All the times That we share together Girl you blow my mind Yeah They can't separate us All day And night Moving you forward Pulling you close Flipping you over Kissing your shoulders And all day and I kissing your neck, making you sweat, making it wet, put you to the test, baby. Baby, you got me under your spell, don't know what to do. My engine on automatic, I keep on speeding down your street. It's so real, you on a higher level of sex appeal. Oh yeah, they can't separate us, no, all day and night Moving you forward, baby, yeah, woo, oh baby And all day and night, kissing your neck Making you sweat, making it wet I said, all day, baby, and night, mama. All day, baby, and night, mama say. All day, baby, said all day and night, mama. Uh, all day, I said all day and night, mama say all day and night. How about that? Wow, wait, nice. What do you think, Floyd? Very nice. <laughs> Nick, thank you. You should never Nick, leave this on the table around me. <laughs> <laughs> thank very you, nice. Thank, thank you, Grant, for having me. Yeah, really thank you. We'll come back and do another one in a little while. Good picture. Let Nick Green. Marcelli on the guitar. Yeah, very nice. So I like the line flipping you over. <laughs> did you guys notice that? I did. <laughs> I thought that would be a good line for you to use. No, it was near and dear to my heart, absolutely. Yeah. So is Flip your real name, actually? Yeah. Okay. Let's get my so, parents. So, Lenny, this is the song. The album is called All or Nothing. All or Nothing. And it's online. It's online, Lenny available, Green. Spotify, Even, iTunes, Apple. Your real name is not Lenny, though. My real name is not Lenny. It's Perrin. First name. My first name is Perrin, yes. P-E-R-R-I-N. Yes, like, is, the, like the steak sauce. Which, which is a, <laughs> a very sort of sophisticated sounding name. Well, thank you. Why didn't you go with Perrin Green, which sounds huh. well, sexier, you know, in my opinion? I, I just, I went through the whole, uh, what's your name, Darren, <laughs> Perry, ah. you know, Pierre, Perron, you know, and I just made it easy for people. Lenny. Lenny's easy. <laughs> so, okay. All right. You know, they, they could confuse it called, with Benny maybe, but. <laughs> what were you called as a kid? Perrin or P or P-Dog or, you know. P-Dog Green. P dog, <laughs> where, where um, P Green sounds good. Oh, P Green, you know that's the other one. Then I was like P Green, uh, you know. 
I went. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go with that. I, I actually, I was called greasy. I was. I was greasy. Yeah, as okay. the younger R and B side of me was called greasy. I have two albums out under greasy also. Really? Yes. You were called. That was your stage name. My you stage name. Music under greasy. Greasy. G R E A S Y. Everybody was on the Wheezy and the Waynes and the Easies ah, okay. and the. So I was trying to uh, greasy. fit in with the. <laughs> Okay. The urban Are you community. still selling those? Does people still stream stuff? People still stream it. I have a song on the radio. I have a song on the radio right now, Q93, actually. Um, you could, you could uh, under request Gre- it. Under Greasy or Lenny Green? Well, no. This is, this is a collab um, with Devious, myself, Lenny Green. It's called Never Let Go. It's a All song right. produced by S80, which is a, he's, a, he's also from New Orleans, one of your premier hip-hop urban right. producers. And that's you on that song. And that's me yeah, on that song. Okay. Yeah, well, that's damn cool. All right, Greasy. Okay, so what about Flip? How about that for a name? <laughs> uh, now it's fine. Growing up, it sucked. Your parents actually called you Flip. That's like a real name. It's a real not name. Not a nickname. Not a nickname. It's not Francis. But or... no, and it's, it's amazing because nobody believes that. So people are like, what's your name? My name's Flip. Oh, they, you mean Philip. They think you're yeah, being smart with right. him or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, even you, like, because Grant introduced me to you, mm-hmm. and I don't remember what you called me. Like, you, like Flicka? <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. It was that or something like it. <laughs> so why did they come up with Flip? Where are your parents from? Uh, both Florence? originally from New York. Right, they're and, not far on us or anything. Fucking, they're out of this world. Um, no, they're they're from New York. They moved to Phoenix, which is where I'm from. I've got three older sisters, uh, all with normal names. What are their names? Uh, oh. Sherry, Robin, and Debbie. Yeah, right. Are you but, the youngest? Uh, yeah, I'm the youngest. So they thought, I guess, well, they gave up on having regular humans. Yes, yeah, and so <laughs> I mean, it's really cool because, like, my it's parents' like a pet's are, name. My parents have passed away, and then Robin passed away. So three are gone, and three are still alive. Wow. So now I'm looking at the rest of the family like sort of a Highlander, right? Because <laughs> like I'm hoping if, if there can be only one, I, I want to be the last man standing. And what, what, are, the, what are the other ones die from, the other three die from? Uh, my parents and whatnot. Well, well the, yeah, and your sister did as well? Yeah, well, she, she was a slow motion suicide. Mm-hmm. Low motion suicide. Wow. It took that her 20 from? years because she was really shitty at it. Is it drugs mm-hmm. and alcohol? Yeah, mostly. One day she called me up. She goes, I got a gun. I go, really? What'd you get? She goes, I got a 38. I can't take it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end it all. And I go, wow, that's not serious. She goes, I didn't get bullets. So I go, are, are you going to bludgeon yourself? Like that's going to that's gonna take a really long time. You know, you're fucking diabetic. Why don't you take the gun money and go to the Four Seasons and just eat dessert? You know, like go out in style. <laughs> is this true or is this a sort of routine? There's routine? nothing in my life I've ever written. Everything is all true. Is that right? All your stand-up stuff is just basically true stories. Not basically. Absolutely it true. It is true. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely wow. true. Wow. You know, the, the cool thing with having a life that's a shit show in motion <laughs> is you really don't have to write material. Right. So. Like well, Richard I, Pryor, I guess. <laughs> but what you do is, what, what's so fascinating for me is that you, you hypnotize people on stage. Yeah, I do that as well. Yeah. So yes, you, sir. You do stand-up comedy. Yep. But... But most of the stuff, the stuff I've seen, which is not live, which is just online, is you've hypnotized a bunch of people. That by the time I see those videos online, they're already hypnotized. Right. And you're telling them that they're all something else. They're all whatever it is. They're people in a trailer park. I saw one thing about a trailer park and another thing where people are... <laughs> People are some sort of other fantasy that they have, and then they act out these. Yeah. Things. So, I mean, here's the thing I'm an entertainer, but I'm also wildly lazy. So, <laughs> what I've learned how to do, and I'm actually not kidding, what I've learned how to do is entertain an audience by getting other people to do it for me. Yeah, I know that's, and, it sounds <laughs> self deprecating, but it actually is extremely difficult to do, and you're really smart at how mm, you, well, at the things you're telling. I mean, I've, so I've seen stage hypnotists before where they tell people they're a chicken and they're clucking like a chicken, they're running around. <laughs> yeah. You don't do any stupid shit like that. All your stuff is like, it's clever. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I grew up, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I grew up probably as part of the first TV generation, right? So I grew up on game shows and talk shows. And, um, you, you make know, yourself sound pretty old. I think TV was invented in like 1928 or something. Uh, yeah, but I mean, at that point, there was only one TV, and it, I think it was in the White House. <laughs> and then by like 1959, there were five TVs, and Elvis had three of them. And, uh, so, so what years did you grow up? You don't look that old. I grew up in the, in the uh, 2000s. 2000. <laughs> 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 no, so I, you know, I just grew up, I grew up on TV. I was kind of a latchkey kid, and, and I grew up watching... Um, uh, just, I, I liked, you know, from SNL, you know, sketch shows and the Groundlings and uh, SCTV. And, and so I, I thought it would be funnier 
to help people um, uncover their creativity through hypnosis and, and to sort of make it a sketch show. I thought that was way funnier than barking like a dog or squealing like a pig. It is funny. It's it's clever as well, which is the cool thing about. So 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 I have a question. Yes, sir. So is it is it that everyone can be hypnotized and don't know it, or is it that some people can be hypnotized and have that, I guess, weakness or it's not a weakness. Or zone? <laughs> right? It's not a weakness. I thought not it was a weakness. Like yeah, a, most like people a brain, do actually. Like a, you know, like to to be able to give in to you know whatever it is. Almost everyone can be hypnotized under the right circumstances, but not all people can be hypnotized at the same time for the same reasons. Uh. So as an, and the other thing is, like you said, like a weakness. So, so a lot of people come up to me and they'll go, uh, so, and every time I, I, uh, I do an impression of someone talking to me, I always do a Southern accent, but I don't know why. So, uh, people will go, so is it easier to hypnotize stupid people? <laughs> and, uh, cause that, I think that that's the assumption that you have to right. be weak minded, weak will have I, a weakness. I, I, no, that's right. really common. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and actually, it's really, really hard to hypnotize stupid people because it takes a lot of concentration and focus. Mm-hmm. Uh, the more intelligent you are, in many cases, the easier it is. But mm. here, here's the funny thing. Let's say you get a, hip, a, a, a stupid person hypnotized. Mm-hmm. Once they're hypnotized, they're still fucking stupid. <laughs> like, it doesn't, it doesn't fix that. And, and so that's the other thing. It's like, so to hypnotize a stupid person, that's the, that's the volunteer that would bark like a dog and squeal like a pig because they don't really bring a lot to the party. They're not creative they don't have a lot of uh world experience or opinions that are not exposed to stuff so they don't have anything to draw from mm. uh on the other hand someone who is uh really uh sort of tuned in and intelligent and educated they've got a lot of um things to pull from and, and a lot of world experience so when i when i start suggesting different things your palate you know is really diverse mm-hmm. and, and and all that sort of swimming around <laughs> in your mind and so your unconscious mind will pick these uh, these things that that make sense to it, and, and you'll be able to create a really interesting character. Mm. Well, what exactly is hypnosis? It's bullshit. Okay. I mean, to <laughs> to the degree that no, to the degree that you know, there's a, the, the segment of people who thinks that it's it's not real. Okay, I I think it is. I've been doing it my entire adult life. On the other hand, there's a, a segment of people who think that uh, the hypnotist gets you into a trance and then controls you and then you lose all willpower. And it's not that either. So hypnosis is that part of your mind. It's just a form of concentration and communication. And if you, if you look at, for instance, um, advertising, advertising, whether it's, uh, you know, on TV, on radio, uh, print, whatever, they're looking to appeal to your emotions and they're trying to manipulate you. They're trying to appeal to your desires. Tap in. Okay. Yeah. And, and that to some degree is a form of hypnosis. It's just a little bit more devious. So when I talk to you, if I were to say to you, take a deep breath slowly in, you could think to yourself, no, or you could think, okay. And then if you take a deep breath (laughs) in, it's your choice. And if I say, close your eyes and concentrate on relaxing your body and blah, 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 you're doing all the work, but it's only because you chose to, you accepted those ideas and you decided to do it. Yeah, But what is happening to my brain when I'm, when I, I'm sort of not conscious, but I'm my, is it my subconscious that's now? Yeah, is I that mean, like a half week dream? That's, it's kind of that... like a waking dream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you're you're still awake. You're still in control, and that's the other thing. Like, if hypnosis is real, which I, I propose that it is, um, why don't you have these zombie looking people robbing convenience stores and women walking around going, "I'm pregnant," but I don't remember having sex with anyone other than mm. the roofie, which that would explain that. Um, mm. But you, the reason is hip. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to get on to Jesus. There. No, but the thing of it is a hypnotist doesn't control anyone. And furthermore, you're not asleep. You're not unconscious. You're not in a trance. So if I said to you, Grant, you know, you're deeply hypnotized, you know, mm-hmm. go rob the bar. You know, you think to yourself, well, no, I don't want to rob the bar. That's, that's illegal. That's so immoral. I still have some sort of choice. You have not some sort of, you have, com- you have complete choice. Mm. Okay. And that's why you, like a hypnotist, there's a lot of people going around doing seminars and workshops um, around the country, like stop smoking and lose weight, uh-huh. where it works for some but not for others. Because the thing that is, a hypnotist can't make you stop smoking. Like if you don't want to stop, you can be deeply hypnotizable. You're not going to stop. You're saying that you access a part of the brain yourself that stops. Yeah, yourself. the hypnotist is like right. an orchestra, uh, orchestra conductor, right? You're the musician, and they'll say, "Here's what I want you to do," and you'll either pick up the instrument or you won't. Okay, but you're the one who's doing the work. Talking of picking up instruments, Andrew, you want to play something today, even though we can't hear it. What a nice thing. segue! What was that? A, that was a nice segue. I'll try. Oh, now I can hear you beautifully. Oh, good. Yeah, Things I'll. Uh, can, okay. I'll Things give it a shot. Back. Okay, so listen, we're going to take a very quick break. And when we come back, we have a brand new song from Andrew Duhon right after this. All right. 
And we're back on Happy Hour with comic hypnotist Flip Orley, Lenny Green. How would you describe yourself as reggae and soul and uh, R&B I'm a, singer? I'm a soul singer, R&B singer. Um, soul and R&B singer. Yeah. Lenny Green, otherwise known as Perrin. Sure. <laughs> or Greasy. Yep. And Andrew Duhon with a or guitar. Or P-Dog. P-Dog. P-Green. <laughs> Dog. So, Andrew, what's going on? Oh, you know, man, I was tentative on the song idea simply because... You know, it's like songs can be puzzles. I can hear you now. And I feel yeah. like I feel like this one's all over the place right now. I don't know where the pieces go. You know what I mean? You know it's, what I mean, Lenny? I know what you mean, man. So that's where I'm it's at. It's a work in progress. So I'm just going to I'm going to sing the pieces to you, I guess. Okay. See yeah. how it goes. Maybe I figure it out in As this, you, you know, when, this run through. Okay, that's the first time well, you've played it anywhere. Well, you know, actually I think I've played a draft of this before. Okay. But uh this is a new draft. All right. This is a uh, this is a not a love song, but uh, sort of a love song. But it's a puzzle already. That right? It's a uh, my version of a sort of a love song. It goes like this. All right. We all learn it the hard way It hurts ain't even heart shaped And it's all blood and circuitry It's all muscle memory Feelings that we just can't shake. We all got habits that we just can't break. And sometimes I still drive down your street by mistake. And we're old enough to see. And nothing's really meant to be. So can we please put the fairy tale to sleep? We all learn it the hard way that hearts ain't even heart shaped. Now it's all muscle memories. Ooh. Charming and his damsel in distress Bought themselves a house, had some kids Well on their way to happy ever after happiness To the love was on the skids Trying to keep it together for the kids And they still read those damn fairy tales Their mothers did We're old enough to see that nothing's really meant to be. So, can we please put the fairy tale to sleep? We all learn it the hard way. That hearts ain't even heart shaped. It's all muscle memories. It's all muscle memories. Oh yeah. I, I don't thanks, think it, I don't think it needs any work. Oh thanks. Well you know that's I'm, really good. Hell yeah couple of fuck ups in there but you know you know we're figuring it out no you know what since it. i didn't have your phone mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't know it's true you didn't even know what's on there yeah and i <laughs> keep my eyes closed too much to read it so i don't even know why i had it you know it's weird it's like and we've only spoken for like the last 20 or 30 minutes but as far as like when i looked at you lenny like your voice didn't surprise me 
really good, really just smooth and amazing. Thank you. Your voice fucking surprised me. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I in in I a good way? That. Yeah, no, in a really good way. Great. If, 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 if I thought it was shitty, I, I'd, I'd have kept that to myself. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I appreciate it. Great job, man. Andrew's yeah, super thanks. talented, isn't he? Well, this is this is really why uh, I don't I don't play surprised. music because I uh, I blow. Know. Yeah, but you do play the guitar, don't you? I have guitars. There's a difference. You can't, are you any good? <laughs> no, I'm, I mean I, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I was in a rock and roll band in high school, and we played uh, we played the Arizona State Fair, not like a big stage, just a small stage off in the middle of nowhere, and. Uh, a four-piece band, I played rhythm guitar, and then um, the lead guitar player ended up doing a lot of things in music, and the bass player ended up doing a ton of things in music. And uh, at the end of this gig, I said to the, uh, I said to the lead guitar player, I go, oh, my God, like, that's, I think, the best we've ever sounded ever. And he looked at me with a very serious face, and he goes, uh, we turned your amp off before we started. Whoa. And, and they, they did. Like, I looked back, and they had turned my amp off. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, Which is pretty devious, but the worst part is you couldn't even tell. No, I could tell. We sounded really better. Like that was the best <laughs> gig we had done, and and that was the last gig I ever played. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I'm out, bitches. And I was. Did I mean, you do anything else in music? Did you become the manager or? No, I was anything? like, you know what? You guys, let me know when you're playing somewhere because I'm going to come watch you. And I was, I was out. Well, you figured out what you're good at, and it wasn't. Yeah. Playing guitar, apparently. It was fucking horrible. But you it's still just, play, though. You still play for fun. No, I mean, like I've I've got guitars, like I've got golf clubs. Right, you know, I mean, well, I have them machines. and I enjoy them, but I, you know, it's like I'm not, I'm not going on the PGA. Mm. Right. <laughs> but so Andrew, uh, how's the writing going? There's no telling, Grant. There, really, you know, I'm just in that vertigo right. of, of unfinished drafts of songs, and I hate them all, and I just dwell in the song cave working on them. And how are you feeling? It's better than that. Are I, you feeling? You know, honestly, it, it's a. Uh, I think I'm in that place where you've been like shoveling. Uh, uh, piles of dirt on all these little mole hills trying to make them bigger and you just keep your head down and, and you, you feel like you're keep not shoveling. making any progress. That's it. Yeah. And then one day you, you pick your head up and you think, wait a minute, now these are these are getting over my head a little bit. This is <laughs> this is kind of working. And, um, so you work on multiple songs at the same time. I feel like that helps the vertigo is uh, mm-hmm. switching, you know, like work on, you know, feel like you get some headway on a verse or something and then just like put that down and move on to something else, get some fresh eyes right. on it. I feel like that's why co-writing is nice because you can do that in real time. You can mm-hmm. bounce those couple lines that you're, you're futzing with with somebody else and they can, they can throw it back at you and you, mm-hmm. you have that bumper lane. But uh, generally I'm writing by myself. So Do you write by yourself, Lenny, or do you write with other people? Uh, both, yeah. This, this record actually, the reason why I'm proud of this record is because this is the first record that I wrote on guitar first, mm-hmm. meaning – you know, the chord arrangements, no words at all, mm-hmm. songs before they became songs with lyrics. Uh-huh. And I, I had never done that before. It's always somebody is doing the music or give me the track and I write to it, you know. So you're on lyrics, man. You're a lyricist, man. Well, lyricist, Up until song, now. songwriter. So this is the first one you start with the music. You first start. one. It's a pretty major yep. change. And I got my good friend Mike Bass uh, to help me with uh, laying everything out, you know, and programming and embellishments and everything else you know yes yeah, really it's a lot of production on this record it's quite Great. different from hearing your stripped down acoustic version yeah i'm thinking about doing that also you know uh right. just to piggyback you know but i have a whole new project coming um what are you doing well it's it's more music with mike actually more more music with mike uh it's dance music like like soul house music um um Got some stuff on the horizon. I, I just started on it a few months ago and uh, got two songs going. Um, I have new music coming out with Renard Poche also. Right. Uh, we have the reggae band every every first Wednesday, I was mentioned earlier. Um, at the Maple here at Maple Right here at the Maple So Leaf. are you doing this full-time? Do you have like a regular job like some people do? Or? I, well, I do have a regular job. Well, it's you... part-time because um, right. I'm, I'm transitioning. But um, I'm a production manager in, in audiovisual. So I, you know, I travel a lot and I do corporate events. When you say transitioning, in 2020, I wouldn't use that phrase. <laughs> That's what I was. That was my first thought. Are you transitioning? Well, genders tra- or <laughs> little little help. Little help. Transitioning from occupations. Yeah. Occupations. Okay. So you. Right. So you're an audiovisual. Right. Uh, me- technical uh, producer. Right. So you ah. know, like the American Heart Association, you know, American Diabetes, you know, Association, all these major conferences that go on around Cisco Live and Google and Microsoft, their annuals, the company that I work for, produce those shows. Okay. So I'm one of the managers that's uh, like, you know, 
I have an area. Do you work at Jazz Fest as well? I don't, but I have. I have, you know, back, I've been doing this over 20 years. Right. Um, Are you but, playing this year at Jazz Fest? I'm playing. We're playing Nola Reggae with Renard yes. Poche, David Barard, Keiko Kamaki, Earl Smith Jr. What uh, day are you playing? Uh, April 30th. We'll be on the Jazz and Heritage stage. Jazz and Heritage stage? Which one is that? Exactly? It's the one with the tent, actually, I think, oh, and if I'm not mistaken. Not the one on the... It's a big, it's a big tent. It's a tent. It's a big, big tent, yeah. Stage. But I could be wrong because they move around. I don't even know what that, so. which what stage that is. Is that the, that's on the ground somewhere? It's on the grounds. You walk out there and uh, when you, if you're walking in like from Espinay, usually yes. that stage is like you walk past it to get onto the, you know, it's like a big Oh, it's a stage a like on the, yeah, tent. okay, near the Acura stage. Yeah, near the Acura stage. Across the thing from it. Okay. Oh, that's cool. And so what day of the week is that exactly? That's the second Thursday. Second Thursday. Yeah. There's two? Th- There's only one Thursday this year, right? There's two Thursdays. There's two Thursdays? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because if there is only one Thursday, then I think you're screwed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> right. There used to only be one Thursday in the middle. Now there's the festivals an extra day I guess long. The and Rolling Stones were the uh, catalyst tra- for yeah, that. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's two Thursdays. How now. shitty would it be to show up on the second Thursday and like nobody's there? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are long past us at Jazz Fest. Andrew, what day are you playing on the uh, first Sunday? First Sunday, okay. Yeah. So have you guys got free tickets for us or anything? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, you know, uh, how many up, do you get? Hit me up after. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main problem is that if you want to go and see all your friends playing at Jazz Fest or whatever, all your favorite bands, and you have to buy $70 tickets. Or, well, how much is it now, I wonder? Oh, it's ah. like 70 something yeah. yeah. I, I heard some good stories from, uh, well, some, some New Orleans uh, legends who uh, I will remain nameless. One in particular, uh, the story was like, you know, you get so many tickets for your band, right? And, the, uh, uh, and he, like, gave them all to his family. And they, you know, they rolled in, and that's not surprising for the people at the gate, you know, people who might just be crew. But then the band shows up, and they're like, ain't got tickets, sorry, we played 30 minutes. (laughs) Did it work? Yeah, it worked. (laughs) Okay, well, let's do it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I don't think I have the the New Orleans legend status to be pulling that one, but I I like that move. That is a good move. move. Last year, we tried to get in free with, remember Catherine Clematis? Who has had the? She's the handicapped yes. monitor. She uh-huh. drives around and checks yes. that it's all cool for handicapped people. She was going to uh-huh. sneak us in in the car. Oh, that'd be but, nice. But we never pulled that off. That was yeah. the Rolling on the That's Rolling Stones day. You certainly you know, could. You know, yeah. if you, you we you know you could get in the van under the cargo blanket. That would work. Yeah, that's what I'm. That saying. would work. They're not going to. They don't check yeah. or anything. Uh uh-uh. uh Okay. We well, got that gigantic van. Yeah, we got a big old van, so that so could work. Just get, Okay, totally. How many people could we get in there lying down? It depends on how comfortable you want to get. I don't care how uncomfortable. Wait, do you have it? to listen from inside the van? No, I think, no, I think once you just got to wait until we'll the just, coast is clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. once you once jump you're in, out. This sounds like we're going to a drive, drive-in drive movie theater in 1967. <laughs> so, Flint, How many people can fit in the Where trunk? were you in 67? Were you in Lafayette? Uh, no, I was born and raised in Phoenix. So when did you get to Lafayette? Why do you live there now? Uh, my, fourth, <laughs> my fourth wife is Cajun. Hmm. My fourth, fourth wife, wife is Cajun. Nice. I'm writing that it's down. That's going to be the name That's of the, the show. <laughs> I, I've never heard that sentence in my life, and probably never will again. No, I, I was living in uh, I was living in Los Angeles and uh, was working at a club in Baton Rouge from time to time called the Grin Room, and um, and I had just at that point had uh, gone through my third divorce, which that was a train wreck, like they all are. And uh, the owner of the club wanted to set me up on a blind date, and I said no. And uh, he goes, why? And I go, like, I'm divorced three times. I think I need a break. And so he goes, you want, you want to get lunch tomorrow, you and me? And I go, yeah, you know, I'll get lunch. And so uh, the next day there was a knock on the door from this little Cajun girl. And uh, she worked for – How little was she? 4 or 11. 4 or 11. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't 14. I mean, she was just short. <laughs> she was 4 or 11. Yeah, four eleven. She was four eleven. <laughs> so she worked. She really for, was a little Cajun girl. Yeah. So she worked okay. for the Tiger uh, radio station, Baton Rouge, um, and and the comedy club is one of her accounts. So he asked her if she wanted to go on a on a, a like to lunch with me, and she said no. And he had asked me if I wanted to go with her, and I said no. And then he threatened that he was going to pull his account with her if she didn't go to lunch with me. So uh, so okay. she did, and and uh, we started dating, and then she moved to Los Angeles with me, and then uh, we eventually moved back to Lafayette, which is where her family's from. So you were living in L.A. with the little Cajun four foot eleven. I was. 
radio salesperson. What was she doing out in L.A.? What were you doing in L.A.? That's where right. I lived. I had moved to L.A. Right. years before. And um, it's really weird. Uh, if you're a big um, Hollywood person, um, you know, and, and you pull down 100000 to a $1 million a show, you can afford to not only live in L.A., but actually be in L.A. Mm-hmm. But if you're someone of my status, especially, you know, however long ago, <laughs> I had to be out of L.A. working on the road three and a half weeks to four weeks a month to, to afford to actually live in L.A. Yeah. But you're pretty successful. You've worked all over the place, and you still do work all over the place. Yeah, I work all over the country. You work all over the country constantly. I like to stay busy. Yeah. yeah LA is expensive. I, I lived in LA first. I'm not a you fan. You lived in LA too? Quick Lanny? second, yeah. Really? With my ex-wife. <laughs> Another ex-wife story. Right, right. <laughs> I think Flip has got the best ex-wife story of all time, though, which, which I heard you tell on another occasion. Yeah, there's, I think there's it was, a, I think so it was many off ex- the record, but I think we could probably put it on the record now. No, we uh, can't. <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo stories? Oh, the tattoo stories. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. I thought yeah, you were tell these about guys the, the tattoo stories. You've story. got to hear this to believe it. I'm ready. So so uh, I'm married and divorced four times, and I'm really, at this point, pretty jaded and better, and I think I'm done. Um, side story. After my fifth divorce, I was doing two months in Atlantic City, and after five divorces, I thought, yeah, I, I don't do this well. And I'm not kidding. This probably will get me in trouble with the LBGTQ community, I guess. I don't mean to, though. So uh, after my fifth divorce, I thought maybe, like maybe I can try to be gay, and I and, and the, this the, is not the story I was thinking of. No, this it's is not even better. But and the theory was, it's like I, I never fight with my male friends and like going out and having a beer and watching a game and blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and uh, and I thought, well, maybe maybe that's a route like I've never explored. Maybe I can do that. And love is love. Love is love. And so I'd uh, I'd walk up and down the boardwalk every because I'm doing shows at night, so I'd walk up and down the boardwalk uh, during the day. And, uh, like I'd see a guy walking by me and I'd, I'd try to picture myself, nothing intimate, nothing weird. It's like, can I imagine myself holding his hand and eating popcorn out of the same container at a movie? Walking down the boardwalk. Yeah. Or, and I, like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't make that happen. And even though I sort of always sort of instinctively knew this, it sort of brought it home that you are who you are and you're attracted to who you're attracted to. And I just thought I'm destined to buy women homes every now and again. <laughs> I guess that's what that is. So after, after my fourth divorce, uh, a gal came to my show on a blind date in Dallas, and um, she and I started talking, and then she dumped the date, and then she and I started dating, and it was love at first sight. And uh, after dating for two or three weeks, I said, you know, I've never had a tattoo, and I've never wanted one, but I could easily see tattooing your name on my body for the rest of my life. And so with that, we went to uh, downtown. Did, did that scare her off? No, she goes, me too. And we oh. went to downtown Dallas and we got tattoos. I mean, so, so there, Stacia, there it is. right? Stacia. There it is. That one, that one's tough. You know what's tougher? Forever. That, uh. That's the one that really, that, that hurts a little bit. So, if you, right, if right. you listen to this as, as a podcast and you're not looking at, uh, the, have we got a photo of that? That's a, that's, that's a, that is a nice gigantic tattoo. fucking tattoo. Dude. Yeah, that is as nice. big as you could possibly get. How long get. did that take? Uh, it was about five, six hours. Wow. wow that's nice. Like Stacia forever. And forever. how long had you been dating at this point? A uh, month. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. So, so then we get married. Like we get married. We, uh, our first date was April 20th. And hey, we can get married. I ask you, quick, just interrupt you for one second. Yeah. What does hers say? Flip. Forever. I don't, I think she. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the yeah, tip that was off. A, right that's a t- I didn't <laughs> see that coming. No, I, I didn't say forever. So, uh, so anywho, I, um, <laughs> So then we got married two months later, like June twentieth, like to the day. We got married two months later. Okay. And uh, we started inking up from time to time. So I've got I've got like thirteen or fourteen tattoos all oh, over my body with her name and every one of them. And uh, so one day we're we were doing a drinking game, and um, and uh, we were playing Battleship. So this is a good marriage when you can still be playing a drinking oh game with God, your wife. So, so like, <laughs> if you've never played, so like, like five shot glasses in a row, that's the aircraft carrier. And then two shot oh, glasses, wow. that's, that's the submarine. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I had just sunk her battleship, and I'm drunk as shit. And I go, I go uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, do a, let's do a bet where the winner gets to choose the tattoo for the loser, and the loser can't say no. And she goes, I'm in. Oh, boy. So the reason why I want to do this, because I, I was ahead. Like, I was ahead. So her name's Stacia. Uh, but, like, she grew up on a farm. She's got blonde hair, grew up on a farm. And every relationship she's ever had has been horrible. So I wanted her to do, when I won, was to have the tattoo guy shave her pubic hair. And then in its place, a tattoo a haystack. And then, and then, I swear to God, I'm not kidding. And then to tattoo a needle coming out of the haystack with my name on it. Huh. Right? Because, like, yeah, see, very I romantic. 
So I, I with your name on the needle. Yeah. Well, there'd be like a yeah. It, He's the needle in the eight stack. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Right. She found oh, yeah. the needle. All right. And the, yeah. So um, <laughs> so I, I was I was drunker than I realized, and I and I wasn't doing as well as I thought, and I ended up losing the game. And she goes, "So you're going to get a tattoo?" And I go, "Yeah." I go, "I don't welch on a bet." So she goes, I want you to get a tattoo of a rope, like a rope that starts on my left hip, and then it works its way towards the middle and then sort of just goes straight south and then, uh, and then encircles like the equator in a noose. Oh, it goes boy. around your penis? No, or uh, balls, around your the testicles. Whole, yeah, the, the balls. Around yeah. the. Oh, oh well, that, that, that's a little bit too much. So you have, a, you have, a, you have a, a tattoo of a rope around your balls. Yeah. And you agreed to have whatever tattoo she said. Well, because was... I really want her to get the, the haystack. So, um, so this, is not, the he- this is not love, for, though. Also, the this, haystack. This is like cruelty. Well, so, anyway, I um, don't recommend it. It turns out that's a really bad idea. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you actually did it. <laughs> yeah, because I don't lie. I don't welch. Do you, so, st- you have that tattoo? Oh, yeah. So, you got your balls tattooed. No, well, I'm not going to show you the balls. But hang on. I'm okay. Move this well, thank you for not doing that. <laughs> yeah. That's something, at least. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There sure, it that's is. her name, Stacia. Look at the size of that tattoo. Oh my Check god! That out world, damn! <laughs> wow, there she is. Oh my god! There she so is. a few months later, she uh, must have been bad ass, oh, man. I mean, okay, there's more. There's more. Wow. <laughs> she, she. I mean, is that the same spelling? It's she always had like, yeah, yeah. Golden, golden. Uh, I was, I was wildly in love. Like I was crazy, madly in love. So uh, a few months later, we were doing another drinking game, and I, uh, I lost it as well. And, uh, <laughs> and so, so she goes, so you're going to get a tattoo? I'm like, I got the rope. What are you going to do? So, uh, so she said that she wanted me to put her signature um, in the same general area. Oh, I w- damn. But like where it's located, like if I, were, if I were like in a really cold room, naked, you'd go like, oh, her initials, right? And then uh-huh. like if I were to start uh-huh. warming up, she'd go, oh, no, it's a, it's a Now this is not true. <laughs> this is a joke. Bro. <laughs> this is a joke. No, it's 100% true. This and is so true. Here's what's really funny. Recently, I was talking to a woman, and, and she, goes, she goes, like, don't, don't send me any dick pics. And I go, I can't. Like, I, I cannot because at this point, like, it's not like some random. immediately incriminated. Yeah, it's like there's no <laughs> plausible Stacia, deniability. You've got like, Stacia it's clearly... tattooed on your dick. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Stacia. She, Stacia. I mean, I'm telling you. Thank God I've it's only a short lady, name. She is yeah. super special. She was, yeah. I mean, she's still. Can, like, we, can we see a photo of her somewhere? Uh, is she on Facebook. I, I'll right. have to show. I'll have to look. She one has up. to be badass for all those names. Oh, okay. I, I wanted yeah. to get the dick tattoo. I wanted to get that in glow in the dark ink. Right? I swear to God. I, so, and, it's like, so it's like light, no light, light, no well, light. Well, yeah, light, like light. I, I wanted to like put a flashlight on it, right? And then and then to, when we had sex at night, like make the room really dark so it goes, Stacia, Stacia, Stacia. <laughs> wow. Okay, listen. Um, I'm learning from this guy. I'm so, learning. I'm learning. <laughs> so you got the tattoo, the Stacia tattoos when you lost the drinking game. Mm-hmm. Did she ever lose any drinking games? No, but she still has six, six tattoos. She's got six. She's got six, yeah. Let's say flip. Okay. People. Okay. Isn't well, it, well, well it's, it's equal. It's equal. Kind I wouldn't of equal, exactly right? call it equal. Wait, but when is the la- when is the last time you saw her? Um, uh, November. Last oh, November. Okay. And what are we up to? What is, What does that January? mean? What month is it? January. 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 So that wasn't yeah. that long ago. Okay. Yeah. No, I was working in Dallas, and and she stopped by to see a show, and so we uh, we visited. She, I mean, I. Stood and how was it? How was the conversation? Was it good? You know, I mean, like she's got her life, and she's doing her thing, and I've got my life, and I'm doing my thing, and uh, she's the only she's the only gal I've been divorced from that I still get along with. Couldn't mm. Couldn't we engineer some way of you getting back together? Now you have. I mean, I don't think there's no way it could work. Um, yeah, I don't think. It, I, how can you be that in love with somebody? Okay, so you're that in love with her. You have an name tattooed all over you. Well, not all over. I mean, there, Pretty was, close. there was still, you know. There's still room for someone yeah. else. Okay. Yeah. But there's a, there's a lot. What's this gigantic tattoo? Well, so, so this said Stacia right here, I had that one fixed, right? <laughs> and then, and then the, the, uh, the chain. Oh, my God. That, that said Stacia, but I also had that one fixed. Oh, you had that turned into a chain. Yeah, just a chain. Uh, okay. And then this, this is interesting. I had my, uh, her name tattooed on my finger for the wedding band. And, uh, and a buddy of mine. He goes, I don't, I don't have the laser ability because he's owned a tattoo shop. I go, okay. He goes, but I've got this other technique for removing tattoos. So uh, he injected acid oh, in, boy. in my finger. And uh, I, I, it's a bad idea. It's oh. really uncomfortable. I, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if you were sort of fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 
you, you don't. You don't. You seem to be so intelligent, and they're not. They're not mutually exclusive. I mean, I can still be smart and have a life that's a shit show. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I really could be a music writer. I swear <laughs> to God, if I could just collaborate with either, either one of you, you totally I could. I mean, you know, we could another hour. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, so. What is she doing, Stacia? We have to get out of here in a minute, actually. But what is Stacia doing? She's living in Texas, and she works uh, in the school district. Okay. So what went wrong? What, what goes from being so totally in love with someone that you're absolutely devoted to them and you have their name tattooed all over your body to I can't get along with you anymore? Oh, no. I didn't, what, leave, I didn't leave her. So what, did, what happened? I, uh, I was in Atlantic City uh, for two months in 2018, July and August. And um, every day was, uh, you know, phone calls and texts, love you, I miss you, blah, blah, blah. And then July 31st, I got a text. Uh, no, I got a phone call July 31st. It's like, I love you, but I'm leaving. And uh, I go, oh, I go, are you divorcing me? And she goes, well, I don't know yet. I'm not sure. And I go, oh. And so then two days later, she sent me an email. She's like, well, yeah, I got an attorney. I'm, I'm divorcing you. <laughs> so she, so Stacia didn't stay. She did not stay. Mm. She was not forever. Check that out. Yeah. It doesn't explain anything. Well, exactly. She just, she just decided while you were away that she wasn't going to be married to you anymore. Did yeah. you find out any more detail than that? Not really. That was it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Damn. You know, and, and, and that's and that's it's weird, you know, because I've met women that do some weird, weird shit to you, you know, like emotionally. Like they'll they'll be like all into you and everything's good, but as soon as you like 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 you, you mentioned in putting a tattoo, like you said, I will tattoo my name on you after two months. That most women would run for the fucking hills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, or you say anything like closely to I love you. Too soon. They yeah. are running for the hills. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's that, I mean, but you know, it doesn't, it, you can't call it, I guess. It's not a. She got uh, a tattoo this, like two months, uh, like a, a three or four weeks in or whatever it was. She got a tattoo the same t- day I did. So right. I go like I could see getting There's a tattoo, there, and y'all. she goes, "Yeah, she's yeah. like I could I could absolutely see that as well." And we, right. we got t- uh, tattoos at the same time. Do you think there's anything to do with alcohol involved here? <laughs> no, I, I that would be such a great uh, like if not That's excuse not reason a, something. Yeah, no, I don't I don't know. No, I don't mean she's an alcoholic. I mean your love and infatuation for her was no. it fueled by. No. Although she was fun, she was fun to drink with. That's what I got the Although impression. I don't know if she cheated when we played games because I, I, I lost a lot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Man, okay, that's a hell of a story to go out with. Okay, so listen, if someone's listened to this and they think they would love to come and see you performing somewhere, Flip's name is Flip Orley, O-R-L-E-Y. Where right. do they find you other than FlipOrley.com, of uh, course? You know, I mean, f- Facebook backslash Flip Orley, Instagram backslash Flip Orley, YouTube. I'm going to be in Birmingham, Alabama, July 31st and February 1st. <coughs> I'm doing a lot of uh, private shows over the next couple months. So um, You do like uh, corporate stuff. Yeah, a lot of, and a, a lot of corporate stuff so far the early part of this year. And then throughout the year, I'm going to be in D.C., Dallas, Houston. Yeah, man. Uh, Tempe, Arizona, Prescott, Arizona, um, probably West Palm Beach, Florida, possibly Given that Miami. you live in Lafayette, do you ever work in New Orleans? Um, you know, it's funny. I'll tell you off air. Uh, oh, that really? I, yeah, oh. that I had uh, – I, I, I contacted someone and I'm waiting to hear back. Oh, okay. So but I don't, I, don't want, yeah, I don't want to throw that out there because I don't know what's going to happen. They might. You could always work here at the Maple Leaf. <laughs> that would be interesting. At yeah, Calvin oh, Station, you know, on Wednesdays. Yeah. Oh yeah, what happens on Wednesdays? Open it's, mic it's night? comedy night, yeah. <laughs> Is it? And it's and I mean it's real comics that show up, you know, that's mm-hmm. on tour. Oh really? And and then you know you have your new your amateurs and stuff, you know. Hey, there you go. I thought that's about it. doing it one one time. You know, Stand up. I was like, nah, yeah, comedy. What do you Just mean? Just talk not? about my life, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I think you should. I, I mean, try it. You know. Here's the thing: if you're a, if you're a firefighter, a police officer, or in the military, and you have a bad day, right? Probably your last day. You get up on stage, tell a few jokes or stories about your life, and people don't laugh. Bruises your ego a little bit. Then you go home, you go to bed. Sun shines the next day. Nothing to lose. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Out. It takes a lot of courage to get Check up in front out. of people. Not if you don't look at them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Flip, this has been great. Thank you for coming all the way down from 
Lafayette to well, hang out with us. Before we go, let me just tell you first about Basics on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Basics underneath sells fine lingerie and Basics Swimming Gym has the full range of fashion swimsuits, workout and yoga clothes with style and the show is also brought to us today by the Positive Vibrations Foundation who are doing some awesome work actually. They create and encourage community through the development and preservation of the arts, music, culture and heritage here in New Orleans and if you'd like to be a part of our Patreon family, go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour and for as little as one solitary dollar you can become a member of our Happy Hour family. This has been a pretty interesting show. Claudia Cravazzo was supposed to be here, but she had some sort of emergency. Kind of lucky she didn't make it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe fate has a strange way of working things out. Hopefully she'll come back another day. So, Lenny Green, it's been great to meet you. Thank you Thank so much you for being here. Me. We can see you at the, you here at the Maple Leaf. Yes, sir. Every, every first Wednesday of the month for 2020, it's NOLA Reggae live with Renard Poche, myself, David Barard, Keiko Kamaki, Earl Smith Jr. You can also catch me February 13th right here at the Maple Leaf okay. Valentine's Day special. Come bring your bring your spooky, <laughs> bring your bring your bring your uh, your special date. other yeah and your, okay and your dancing shoes. What's the weed smoking situation with the reggae band? You all high as hell when you. No one in the band nobody smokes, smokes weed. weed. <laughs> Is that, That's you, crazy. Are you technically still except, a reggae band if nobody except uh, <laughs> except you? Except uh, hmm? somebody. I heard okay. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you could technically be called a reggae band without smoking weed. Isn't it part of the uh, Rastafarian I th- culture? I th- yeah, it is, I think. Uh, it is. You need um, to get with it. Yeah, you're right. Actually, you know, I, I may mm-hmm. have to uh, double one down. There yeah. you go. All right. <laughs> Got to be all in. And Flip, thank you so much for coming all the way from life here to hang out with us. Thanks it's for been, having me. I appreciate it's it. Great. This has been totally worth it as far as we're concerned, I have to say. Right, Andrew? Great storytelling all yeah, around. Yeah, really. This has been a pretty great show. Yeah. That's Happy Hour for another week. The producer of our show is Graham DuPonte. Our music producer is Monique Pyle. Christian Unruh is our music consultant. And Thomas Walsh is our technical director. And today's show is engineered by Colin Peed. And Asher Griffith is our Facebook Live feed director who put this whole thing on Facebook Live. If you didn't see it on Facebook Live, you listen to this as a podcast. Go to Facebook and look for our It's New Orleans Happy Hour page and see what's going on here down at the Maple Leaf. Our fact checker and social media connector is Andrew Searock. Searock, our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can stay upright for about 60 minutes while drinking alcohol, drop us a line. <laughs> our address is on our website, it's neworleans.com. You can also check out many other happy hours we made before this one, as well as some other shows that we make around here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Rishu, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tucker, and our award-winning podcast about death, called Death the Podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la and you can keep up with us between shows on a bunch of time-sucking social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find those links on our website, itsneworleans.com. You can find photos from the show on itsneworleans.com and on our It's New Orleans Happy Hour Facebook page and other places as well. These photos are taken today by Jill LaFleur. You can find more of Jill's photos at lafleurphoto.com. If you listen to this on your favorite podcast app, thanks for subscribing to us. If your podcast app has a share option, try telling a couple of friends about Happy Hour. The show is recorded live today at the Maple Leaf on Oak Street in Uptown New Orleans. Happy Hour is a production of I Know Broadcasting. For itsneworleans.com, on behalf of Andrew Duhon everyone else around here at the table at the Maple Leaf and back at our office at Iono Broadcasting. Thanks for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. I will see you back here next week for more Happy Hour.